Hello, my name is Taylor Hamblin, and I'm going to be going over a research study I did called We Don't Want You to Attack Farmers, Case Study Exploring the Teaching of Civic Engagement in an Honors Government Course in a Rural Setting. Get my timer here ready so I can make sure I'm staying with it. Um, you know, this study was supported by quite a few different um, organizations and people, so I do want to take a moment to thank them. Um, we actually got started with working on this type of research and curriculum development uh, from the Nebraska Department of Education, and through their collaboration, uh, we got a National Geographic grant, which was immensely helpful in getting this started. And we actually ended up giving a presentation at a conference a couple of years ago, and um, Dr. Jesse Bell from the University of Nebraska Medical Center was in the audience and approached us afterwards. It was really I'm impressed with our work and advised us to apply for um, a grant to their institution. So I do want to thank uh, Dr. Bell and the Department of Water, Climate, and Health Program at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and the Claire M. Hubbard Foundation. So again, thank you to all those organizations and people. Now, today's agenda, I'm going to go over the introduction of the actual case study that I um, collected or the research I collected and analyzed. I'm going to go over a little bit of background literature to help get, uh, place the research into context. I will then go over my methods and my data analysis, and then I will also have a short discussion and then leave some space for some reflection. Now, obviously, I'm not there. I'm filming this. And so if there are any questions, I put my email at the end, and I've been told that the conference staff will be able to also share my contact information. So I do advise anybody, if you have questions, please write them down. Uh, send the note to me over email. I'm happy to have that conversation with you online. So going into our introduction, so what was it, like what this work was all about was doing a pilot study of a curriculum we call protecting our waters. Now, like I said in the very beginning, like we got started through the National Geographic grant with partnership from NDE, and we wanted to bring in teachers together to create an inquiry based uh, you know lessons that would help students explore how poor water quality affects human health, especially their local communities. And we had science and social studies teachers come together to do this. And we've been doing this now for three years, um, building lessons and piloting them. And we frame the design of the lessons through wanting to develop students in their research skills. So we, do, you know, we uh, frame the lesson design around teaching students uh, research skills from science, social science, and humanities. We also had the students develop a capacity to be civically engaged. That was really important to me as a social studies teacher and a person who does social studies work. I wanted students to practice citizenship and actually engage with their local communities. So that's what, you know, in a nutshell, these lessons do. Um, and to me, it was extremely important. I like this uh, quote from Kira Hahn because it shows how important it is to develop student civic engagement. And we must continue to see our role as teachers and really any teacher, not just social studies, as preparing future citizens. So that's what this inquiry-based curriculum intended to do. Develop citizenship skills through framing, um, through projects that had students examine how poor water quality affects their local area. And you might be wondering at this point, like, well, why poor water quality? Why is this a choice to you know, center around the curriculum? It's because how impactful it is. Um, if you're in Nebraska or really anywhere, you might see signs such as this on uh, waterways. Uh, so we, we know that human action is causing some really ill effects of water quality, which then affects not just human health, but um, the economy, culture, a lot of different problems. So it was a way to frame students going into their community exploring a real problem which is actually kind of pretty convenient because water is everywhere so it's really easy for students to find locations to test so the research questions that frame or to guide the study what pathways do teachers encounter when piloting the protecting our waters curriculum and how do teachers interact with them what obstacles do teachers encounter when piloting the protecting our waters curriculum and how do teachers interact with them and i highlight those two words pathways and obstacles because i'm very curious as to how teachers deal with the opportunities and the issues that arise when you're doing a curriculum that is, you know, very research heavy, very, you know, very framed by things like, like project-based learning and inquiry-based learning. And then finally, too, I wanted to understand how, how contextual factors affect these things. So how does like being in the local rural community affect teacher? And then that really frames well with our teacher that we have, which I'll get into in a moment when I go into methods. But first, I want to go into background literature. 
So really quick, you know, you might be wondering, like, what is this thing called civic engagement inquiry-based learning? I do like this inquiry arc, which comes from the college career and civic life framework, because it shows how inquiry and civic engagement are all connected. So the next few slides, I'll explain how, how this arc is connected. But basically, see this arc as a way of framing lesson design. So dimension one here in the left and green, you see where it starts with developing questions and planning inquiries. You start with the students asking original questions and then responding to them. And then you end here to the right, here in dimension four, where students take action with all of what they've learned. So really quick, I'll go through some of the basics, you know, tenets of this inquiry arc. So first inquiry, simply put, is just creating uh, the process of asking meaningful questions. So we start from the top, we create questions. Um, sometimes students create them, sometimes we do as teachers. And then they go through this process of searching for evidence, explaining how evidence is collected, and then going all the way to the end where they create an argument and rationalization. So again, that's inquiry very briefly. And if we go back to the inquiry arc, we see how that plays out. We see that in the very beginning that we have students who are creating questions, they're analyzing, they're making arguments. Now, what civic engagement adds to the inquiry arc is students actually doing something meaningful. Like with inquiry, you don't necessarily have to do anything that actually connects to the community. It could be a, a random problem that the teacher gives or students are just, you know, thinking about things that interest them. They don't necessarily involve the actual community and civic engagement and the constructs that com uh, comprise it definitely want us to, you know, they, they advise students to be promoting quality of life in a community, especially their own. So again, we go back to the inquiry arc and we see how that plays out too in the very far right. The students are taking action, they're communicating and critiquing conclusions. So that's what the inquiry arc overall is. And again, that is how protecting our waters is framed. We want students to be completing this inquiry arc and focusing on, you know, the teacher focusing on leading students learning through inquiry-based learning practices and then the students developing those civic engagement skills, which can be seen here on this slide. So that is, you know, the major constructs and you might be wondering now too, like what is the status then of such you know types of learning and thinking in curriculum studies and in schools? And unfortunately, it's not that rosy of a picture. So the current state of U.S. citizenship education, we find our researchers suggest that they find that there's a lack of thoughtful dialogue. We're not really you know we're not really seeing a lot of uh, discussion or dialogue around social justice topics, which are key to doing civic engagement type work. We don't see a lot of procedure to explore controversial topics. So when you know controversial topics do come up, teachers tend to, tend to avoid them. Okay, right, timer paused. Um, we also see an absence of multiple perspectives. So we see things that you know students aren't being exposed to. You know, in a history class, maybe they're not being exposed to two different competing types of uh, narrative. They're only seeing one. And we're again we're seeing an inadequate development of disciplinary skills, which are important to fuel inquiry. And we're really noticing no planning for civic action. Students are memorizing more times than not information that the teacher is transmitting to them, taking a test, and then they move on to the next unit. So the students never really have time to plan or actually engage in civic action. So that's what uh, author suggests for us. Now, going to the actual study that I did, the methods, um, I did a case study and I used qualitative data collection and analysis to do so. I also framed my work through constructivism. So I really wanted to understand the values of a teacher, like how they view their, you know, their context and really trying to stitch together their perspective with my own as we, you know, collected and analyzed to get, uh, data. The per, uh, participant, her name was Layla. That was a pseudonym. And Layla taught an honors government course in a rural setting. And what was most unique about this course was the fact that Layla taught a dual credit government course. So by students completing this course, they also received a college credit. And it wasn't an AP course, it was a dual credit course sponsored by a local college. Uh, Layla's course, like I said, is rural or rural remote. That had 439 students in the area. And again, just wanted to provide some demographic data. Um, going into the actual types of quality that I collected, I collected artifacts, cognitive interviews, field note observations, semi-structured interviews, and written story reflections. And here I show you the different types of actual coding I did. I highlighted dramaturgical coding because it was the one I used the most. I actually enjoyed the most. Um, basically, that process looks like is when you're coding dramaturgically, you are seeing the world as a story or as a narrative, and you're kind of thinking almost as a writer. So your main character, in my case, Layla, is going about her story, and she's coming across obstacles. And you know, by doing those obstacles or coming across those obstacles, she is, you know, uh, using tactics and strategies to get around them. 
she is also having emotions and attitudes while going across our while participating in her story and encountering obstacles. And it really worked, made sense for dramaturgical because I was interested, as you remember my question, is like what obstacles and what pathways are the teachers encountering? So I almost saw this as a story and I really enjoyed that process of looking for the obstacles, the tactics, the emotions, the attitudes while I was coding data and then bringing it all together. So, you know, and I know when we do presentations like this, I would love to show you more of the coding and everything and how I actually triangulated, uh, but for the sake of time. All of that coding, all that, you know, those five different pieces of information, I brought them together and I looked for three structural themes. Themes. So I had the self, which was a civic minded ideology that Layla had. I had the school environment. So what, uh, how did her school context affect her? And then finally, the local rural community. How did her local rural community, well, how did that context affect her? And you see here in the emerge major categories that in quotes, these are the quotes that I pulled that I thought really did a good job of showcasing like how the data went after it was triangulated. Like those quotes really symbolize what I found. So I wanted to really frame this or, you know, construct this using her words. So for example, under the self, we have something called us changing things, but for generations, which shows Layla's commitment to preparing students to work together to improve future outcomes. If we scroll down or all the way to the bottom, we see where we even got the title of this paper, we don't want you to attack farmers, which really showcased Layla's fear of her community, um, being very worried about what they might do based off um, if the students are doing civic engagement projects, like how might the community perceive that she was genuinely afraid. And that was a major category that, um, Really, I feel like encompass the rest, hence that's why I named the paper after it. So that's the data. That's how I organized it. Going into the discussion, question one, what pathways do teachers encounter when piloting um, protecting our water's curriculum? As we see here, Layla's connection to the C3 framework, so again, thinking about the inquiry arc that I brought up during the literature review piece, that inquiry framework, Layla really touched upon every single piece of that except for cre uh, creating and sustaining groups. But she really did touch upon all the different aspects of that inquiry arc. And so we have a very strong civic-minded ideology that Layla possesses. She wants her students to be civically engaged. She wants them to connect to their community. And we see a quote that I pulled at the bottom. You know, she acknowledges that they are a farming community, and she wants her students to see how they can be a part of the solution for generations. So we have a very strong civic-minded ideology as a pathway that we can see for teachers as they develop curriculum. Now, going into obstacles, Layla, one of Layla's major obstacles was just the lack of time that she had um, to teach. So we see here in that box, I pulled you know, the length, her average length of period was 48 minutes. She taught seven periods out of eight, and um, she had three different courses she had to teach. So there was a very much a competition is how she framed it, a competition between her own curricula, other courses, extracurricular activities. Um, you know, like what I found during field observations and during interviews, Layla felt that kids were constantly gone because of absenteeism. Um, and so, so she felt frustrated, disappointed, and being overwhelmed, which we can also see in that quote. Now, the final question, how do contextual factors influence a teacher's interactions with protecting our water's curriculum? And again, this is where we really see um, Layla's fear come out to play. And we start with that quote on the very bottom right, where she even says, we don't want you to attack farmers. And, you know, she's framing it as like, she thinks the community wants her to do more engaging activities like this, but she's afraid that if she does, the kids are going to make conclusions by themselves and maybe go down a path where they blame local community, you know, culture, economics, or leaders for the problems that they're facing. And Layla is genuinely worried about that. And we can even see more in the in the uh, table I created that bottom box on the right. We see also more uh, worries that she expressed. So in general, you know, Layla is a very civic minded teacher um, who we have pathways for, she sees pathways for, but she is very scared of how the community might react. And she also has obstacles within the split itself. So that is Layla's case in the summary. Now going into our reflection, some limitations did happen. I won't go over them all because I've got about one minute left. Um, there is a lack of student perspective that I would have liked to collect. And I only collected data from Layla. I would have loved to have collected data from students. I think just that, you know, going back and forth would have been really powerful. And there's a few other details too that I felt like could have been part of it or I could have, you know, addressed better or if I do it in future research, I should. 
And then future of our protecting our water, what we're doing. So we are creating new sections. We actually already have created new sections. We actually created an English language arts section. And we have also um, added to our science and social studies sections. And we're going to do some more grant writing. And we're in the process of identifying grants. But the three on the right are the ones that we have identified. So if I'm talking to anybody right now and you're interested in like interdisciplinary curriculum and research, um, and you're interested in doing grants, feel free to contact me. We're always looking for new team members and new people to collaborate with. Um, and again, like we are doing an interdisciplinary pilot right now between a civics teacher, a language arts teacher, and a science teacher. And we're going to continue to do our collaborations with other uh, entities like the College of Agriculture here at UNL and also with groups like Civics Nebraska and the Natural Resource Districts. So that is my time. Uh, sorry, that was a, I felt like a mile a minute in my mouth, but I really do appreciate your time. Feel free to send me any questions to my email and I will go ahead and stop recording. Everyone have a great rest of the conference.